what's going on, everybody? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know what it is. This is Kevin from the Code Progression Podcast. But to my city rocks, we're rock and metal thrive. Happy Tuesday, everybody. It is March 9th. Also, happy 15th birthday, my little cousin Eli, who turns again 15 today. And time for a future presentation. But first, I just want to give a shout out to Brian from MVK Music Group and Maverick Apparel for sending me this nice shirt after all the uh, bands I've talked to from MVK Music Group. Brian, you the man. So, on to our feature presentation today. I got to talk with a member of one of my favorite bands of all time. And we talked all about his solo project. We talked all about movies. We talked all about different emotions. We talked about so much stuff. It was just, this is just an incredible conversation. It's, again, it feels like him and I were in the living room together, just hanging out, drinking a beer, and just talking about whatever came to mind. So please welcome the rhythm guitarist or Breaking Benjamin. And we're talking all about his solo project today. Please welcome Mr. Keith Wallen to the Core Progression Podcast. Are you guys ready? Because, oh boy, you guys know I am. So let's go! Yeah! Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Chord Progression Podcast, this is one that I couldn't honestly not believe that I have the chance to actually pull this off and interview this person right here. One of my favorite bands out there, Break Mansion, this guy has been a part of since about 2014 as their rhythm guitarist. I've seen him play live to this point twice. He also has his solo project, which is what we're going to be talking about today because his song Dream Away is out now. I think that's going to be coming out in his second full-on EP or full-on release with his solo project. So please welcome to the podcast, Keith Wa- Keith Wallen. I almost messed it up again. Keith Wallen. So Keith, <laughs> welcome to the Core Progression Podcast. Hey, how's it going, man? Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Thanks for yeah. being on. And I knew I was going to mess that up, even if I, even though I asked right, <laughs> right away, I'm like, I know I'm going to mess this up at some point for some reason. And of course, I got my own head on that one. Uh, it's all good. It's uh, not the first time and probably won't be the last. So it's I'm used to it. D- probably won't be the last even on this one either. I'll probably mess it up <laughs> at least at one point. I probably have to say it like 10 times straight and then have to think it through like 50 more times and then I'll finally have it down. <laughs> now nah, it's all good. That's just the way it goes. All right, Keith, before we get started, though, really jumping into this stuff. One thing I always like to start out with is by having you introduce yourself to the audience as well, because I know a lot of people know of the band that you're in, but not with the solo project as much, probably. So I would like to get them to know you a little bit more. So I want you to say, ask, answer me three questions. A, what is your name? B, what do you do with your solo project? And three, this is my favorite one. I want to know a little fun fact about yourself or a little fun story about yourself, but I always like to know the wackiest thing that you can think of. I've had people tell me about their like famous Instagram pets or Twitter pets. I've had people tell me about times when they've uh, chloroformed a band member and buried him in the sand in the in in like Florida in the beach, just like up to their waist, and then uh, put a bunch of ketchup around and make it look like they chopped up their legs, you know, for fun. So yeah, sure. Whatever you got, I'm ready for you. Yeah. Well, uh, my name's Keith Wallen. Um, yeah, I'm a musician. Um, I've been playing music in bands over 20 years. Um, yeah, I grew up in West Virginia, um, started, started, you know, playing music with a a good friend of mine growing up and, uh, that eventually we, uh, we kind of moved, uh, to Tennessee, started, our started our first band, which was called Copper. And, uh, we played regionally, um, for eight years, um, you know, had a few songs on the radio here and there. And, uh, really that's just kind of how I started my career and really just developed my, my love for performing and music uh, and songwriting as well. Um, and then after that, I was in a band called Adelita's Way for about four years. Uh, same kind of thing, rock rock music. We, we toured all around the place. Um, and uh, yeah, I was just, I was rhythm guitar, guitar player for that band for a while. Uh, after that band, I... Um, uh, was, was contacted by Ben. He was, he was kind of looking for some, some new musicians to, to possibly, uh, reform Breaking Benjamin with. And, uh, I was fortunate enough to, to get that opportunity. And, um, yeah, the rest is history here. Here I am, I guess we, we, you know, I, us new guys have been in the band for about six years now, uh, maybe longer. Uh, it doesn't seem like that long because it seems like, you know, just yesterday we were, we were kind of rehearsing and, getting this thing, uh, fired up again. But, uh, I guess that just tells me that, uh, it's, it's, you know, we're having fun. So it's, it's been good. Um, past that, uh, you know, uh, I guess to your, uh, next part of your question, uh, my solo stuff. So I've, I've, I've always been 
um, a songwriter. And, um, you know, there's, there's things that kind of, you know, that I write that aren't necessarily the right fit for the bands that I'm in. Uh, so I've always, I've always been a singer and I've always tried to, um, you know, come up with stuff that I can kind of work on, on the side and, and, and develop that part of my career. And, and hopefully, um, you know, people out there will check it out and like it. And I'll have the opportunity, hopefully to, to go out and perform and play for, for many years, you know, as long as I can, that's another thing I kind of say to people because, uh, you know, you never, you never know, uh, when the day is going to come, when, when your fingers aren't working like they used to, and your voice isn't responsive and working like it used to. And, um, so right now everything's all good and I want to just write and perform and put out as much stuff while I can. So, uh, so yeah, that's really, uh, the, the solo stuff. I just, I love music and I, I just want to, I want to put out more stuff as much as I can. And, uh, sometimes the stuff isn't the right fit for the bands I'm in. So kind of frees me up creatively to kind of, uh, you know, experiment and do whatever kind of direction I want to do. So that's, that's always nice. And uh, as far as the third part of your question, um, gosh, some kind of wacky thing about me. Um, I'm pretty boring, man. Uh, I'm really, <laughs> I'm pretty boring. I, I, I just, I, I love, I love the simple things in life. I love, uh, I love to, to eat food and enjoy a good meal. Um, never, I never met a pizza that I didn't like. Um, I love movies. Um, uh, that's, that's kind of a, uh, kind of an escape for me. Um, you know how concerts are for you, for me, I, I love, um, just watching movies and watching that, uh, that art form. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, you know, completely different medium than, than music, but so relative as, as you know, cause music ties into, uh, you know, the, the theatrical part of stories. And, and, uh, so I've always loved that kind of juxtaposition there, but, uh, yeah, I love, I love to watch movies and just kind of escape reality for a bit and just kind of get immersed into the, the story and the visual aspect of, uh, of movies and, uh, and of course shows and Netflix and all that stuff. But I feel like during this quarantine, I've pretty much watched, I've watched everything that's out. And I always joke around with people. It was like, I think I finished Netflix. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, that's pretty much it, man. That's, uh, that's me in a nutshell. That, that is a pretty good summary to put into a nutshell right there. And one thing I do have to ask about is, especially when you're talking about the movies being the escape for you as well, where kind of like with Concert Me, like we were talking about earlier, where it's that time to just kind of just turn off your brain from everything else that's going on in the world, get yourself immersed in what is going on right in front of you and just really enjoy. So what I have to ask you is when it comes to movies and shows, is there any specific type of movie, any specific type of show, any genre of movie, any franchise that you really latch on to? that just like is your go-to when it comes to just trying to have that time to just get away from everything and just escape into kind of like your own happiness? Sure. Yeah. Uh, gosh, I'd probably say, uh, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a bit of a nerd. I, I love sci-fi stuff. If there's, if there's any kind of, uh, involvement with space or <laughs> any kind of, you know, superhuman ability, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much into that. Uh, but uh, you know, I like them all. I, I tend that I'm I'm more excited about those those kind of movies though because it's you know it's it's always kind of action packed and kind of keeps me keeps me immersed. But uh, yeah, and a, a huge fan of Christopher Nolan, uh, amazing director. Just every movie that he puts out, I I just I love. So it's pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. I still see myself every time and time again, always going back to the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy, just because I, I mean, yeah. that was when it comes to Batman, it's like everyone has every generation has their Batman. Right. And like for me, it was because I mean, I was born in 94. So Batman Begins came out in 05. I was 11 years old. Like that was my Batman. There was nobody else that was going to just come in there. And it was just all the characters that were introduced throughout that movie. Of course, Liam Neeson as Ra's al Ghul just. I mean, I, I love Liam Neeson as an actor, so that was just perfect. Then you have, of oh, course, yeah. had Heath Ledger as the Joker. We'll pro I mean, it's it could be between him and Joaquin Phoenix or who played the Joker better. I still think it was Heath Ledger just because it had more of that anarchistic kind of style. And then you go to uh, Dark Knight Rise where you had Tom Hardy with Bane and then Anne Hathaway as Catwoman. I mean, it, it all just worked out really well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree. I, I, f I feel like that whole trilogy is just a masterpiece. 
uh, yeah, Heath Leather or Heath Ledger's uh, just performance, just the the uh, mannerisms and everything that he just kind of invented for that character are just, uh, in my opinion, second to none. Obviously, I'm a fan of Jack Nicholson and Joaquin Phoenix. I think they're uh, incredible actors. But uh, yeah, just as a whole, I felt like uh, that that Batman trilogy was super amazing. And I mean, it, even other the, the other movies that Christopher Nolan has has done. I mean, Inception was amazing. Interstellar was just, you know, mind blowing. And and uh, I, and I love the I love the score and the soundtrack that uh, Hans Zimmer did. I mean, it's just so cool. Uh, all that organ stuff and just really, really uh, amazing. And I mean, I watched and I watched his new movie, Tenet, also, uh, but it's super confusing to me. <laughs> I, had to, <laughs> I had to rewatch it a few times. I'm like, after the first time I watched, I was like, what happened? What's what's this mean? So when so what's that guy doing when he's you know, I'm just like. I had to get online and kind of research and uh, kind of, you know, look up a few things. But then I've rewatched it a few times and I'm like, oh, OK, all right. But it was kind of funny because like usually I'm pretty good at picking up and following uh, with a story and a plot of, of a movie. But that one was it was uh, pretty, pretty complex. And, and he wrote that, too. He wrote that thing. I'm just like, man, that's pretty genius. And, and of course, the music is cool in that movie, too. I'm going to have to watch them because I've yet to see it. I had some trouble kind of trying to follow along with Inception when I first saw it with all the different dream levels, figuring out like, okay, what yeah. timing is it now? What's going oh. on here? Oh, of buddy, course. you're you're in for it on this one. This one's this one's way, <laughs> <laughs> way more complex, in my opinion. I still think I have the, like, because Interstellar, there is no real comical moments in there. But when I saw it in theaters, because I was in college at the time, I, me and three of my friends went to go see it. I still think I own the best uh time when I just blurted out something in the theater and I had everyone breaking out in laughter because it came out in 2014 and it was yeah. like it came out right at the time when I remember they had that giant snowstorm up in Buffalo where they got like six feet of snow in like a day maybe uh -huh. so of course they end up uh, going to that planet just got all the snow all the ice all over the place and it's just you hear the score and all of a sudden I just yell out hey everybody look Buffalo <laughs> boom just everyone's just laughing hysterically i'm like okay i am not saying anything more the rest of the movie i got my take in and if i yeah. say anything more it's either it has to be better than that or i'm gonna be ridiculed just <laughs> yeah. stay quiet pressure's now. on <laughs> it's like i got i got i got my one i'm good <laughs> but another thing you said too was just kind of having like uh like that nerd influence that kind of like that uh more sci-fi futuristic kind of feel to it and oddly enough, especially when I listen to uh, your song Dream Away, which is one of your most recent songs you came out with for the solo project, I actually picked up on a little bit of like electronic feel of like a cybersonic feel that was brought in there. So now it starts to make a lot more sense knowing a little bit more about you and more about your uh, personal taste when it comes to movies, media, whatever it might be. So kind of starting to connect the dots here already just on that song. <laughs> Yeah, uh, for sure. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, the, the, the music and sounds of the eighties. Uh, you know, I grew up in the eighties, so, uh, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of ingrained in there, but, uh, yeah, I, th I thought it was a cool kind of aspect that, uh, my producer, uh, Joe Rickard, he, he kind of, uh, added that little element in there and then I thought it was super cool and, and kind of fit the vibe of the song that I was kind of going for. So we kind of just took it and ran with it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I love all that stuff. I mean, all, all the, the sci-fi uh, sounds and, and, you know, from movies and stuff, even back in the day and, and, and now, you know, like Blade Runner and stuff like that. And big fan of Ridley Scott and all his, his material. Um, and just even, you know, the Marvel stuff, the Marvel movies, you know, all the, all the Avengers movies. Um, you know, I've seen them all and I'm a big fan of all that stuff. Star Wars, Star Trek you name it. So I'm, I'm definitely, uh, yeah, kind of a nerd on that aspect, but it's all right. I'm not ashamed one bit. I, I mean, there's a lot of, one thing that we noticed, especially from like when I was growing up as well, when it came to a lot of the superhero stuff, the comic book stuff. Now this is before Iron Man ever came out. I'm talking yeah. about Iron Man 2008 with uh, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. It was like, that was all kind of shied away and like no one really talked about because I was considered kind of the nerd thing. All of a sudden Iron Man comes out, starts the MCU and there's a lot of people that liked it, but never actually expressed it. Like one of my good friends, he was always he was always big into music as well. But I never knew that he was a big comic book guy, big just Marvel nerd up until yeah. about 
I want to say two years ago when he bought a house and he's like, yeah, come over for a housewarming party. Me and my best friend just show up. And all of a sudden he's like, yeah, this is my room that my girlfriend let me have. And it was like a nice little loft area. And he had all of these different comic books, all the, any kind of Lord of the Rings or Hobbit trilogy stuff. I'm like, yeah, I did awesome. not know this man. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. And oh yeah. Iron Man rules. That movie was great. Yeah. Uh, really well done. Perfect. The perfect, you know, first movie to kind of kick it off. I thought. Oh, absolutely. Because you kind of, you got that charismatic character to really take the lead over all of these different characters. Well, especially when you're bringing the Avengers, you had Robert Downey Jr. be that charismatic guy. And yep. going forward, of course, you got guys like Chris Evans. They started out with Edward Norton as the Hulk, but then they went to Mark Ruffalo. You had Chris Hemsworth as Thor because he looks like he could be just a uh, Nordic god at this point with the <laughs> build and the hair. And then you start to add other characters around there, but especially for that uh for that first iteration up until Endgame, of course, Robert Downey Jr. really taking the helm of that made a lot of sense, especially given the charisma that he has on screen. For sure. Yeah. Uh, super talented actor. Um, yeah, he killed it. He killed it. Uh, you know, and and uh, honestly, I don't know if if the, you know, the MCU really would have would have had that great of a star had uh, had he not been cast and, and has, you know, had he not, you know, really just delivered a grand slam with that character so well kind of taking a look back at it as well when you're thinking about some of this stuff a lot of those um others like universes that are yeah cinematic universe that people have been trying to create it's kind of like if you don't get off to that heavy start right away they kind of just taper off and two that come to mind is of course the dc universe where they start out with man of steel and that just really didn't have the same gusto that uh iron man had to kick off the mcu or then when uh was it Universal was going to do that dark universe? They start out with the mummy and they completely scrapped it after one movie. So it's like you having that yeah. start just really allows you just to take off from there and just have a base to build off of. Yeah, absolutely. I never even saw that movie, uh, the mummy or whatever. You know, I remember the old ones with uh, Brandon Fraser, but yeah, I, I never, I never saw it. Didn't look that great to me just from the preview. So I didn't, I didn't I, waste my time. Oh, oh, you didn't list out on anything. I think I watched it once, maybe right after, right when like the uh, pandemic shutdown started. Because I'm like, oh, yeah. you know, I'll check it out, see how, see what this actually was. And it was, yeah. uh, it was not good. Like the ones with Brendan Fraser, though, they were fun. They didn't take themselves too seriously, but they totally. really stuck to the whole mummy thing. It just, I still watch those from time to time. I, I was watching those since I was like six years old. It was, those are movies are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're cool. Except maybe the CGI could have been better in The Mummy Returns when The Rock comes in as the Scorpion King. That could have been done a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, technology has uh, come a long way, uh, you know, and it's it's still going. And, in, you know, it'll never it'll never, you know, stop evolving. So who knows what uh, what movies are going to be like here sometime in the future. I'll say give it 10, 15 years in a movie like Iron Man. It, the original one is going to end up looking obsolete, te like just technology wise with special effects, even though. Of course, right now, 13 years later, it still looks really damn good. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 Who knows? I mean, I guess we'll see. That's definitely exciting. I mean, you never know. It could have like one of those like timeless feels in terms of effects, kind of like a Stanley Kubrick film, like 2001 A Space Odyssey, because I, mm -hmm. I recently actually watched the trailer for it and how it was done. It literally looks like it could have been made today. Yeah, I actually that was one of those movies that uh, I'd never seen and I, and I wanted to uh you know i wanted to watch it and and watched it during the whole pandemic lockdown and everything and uh it's crazy uh i mean and and i i made that comment to uh my wife you know she's sitting there watching it with me and and i was like man this looks great you know it really does hold up and for you know as old as that movie is it was uh really really impressive and uh but man, there's some there's some definite uh, <laughs> weird weird moments in the movie for sure. Um, gosh, when when they're tra they're traveling and they're they're you know they're going through the the warp or whatever, and uh, all the just the, the colors are flying through. I mean, just I mean, I couldn't imagine being on on any kind of drugs watching that. Where I mean, maybe that's <laughs> the point. Maybe that's maybe that's the time to to do the drugs. I don't know, but don't do drugs, kids. Mm -hmm. And anyway. <laughs> yeah, maybe you never know. Plus, there was one thing where um, I actually recently used a lot of 2001 A Space Odyssey stuff for a podcast that is coming out for a band called Dream Shade because they had an album that was all about basically based off of the uh, pale blue dot thing from Carl Sagan. 
And I'm like, I got to find something like weird, like something like spacey to kind of really work with like some weird preview videos and yeah. actually use the time warp one where it's just like, okay, what's going to come at you in the time warp? I'm like, here's the album cover in the video, just kind of like slowly growing. And all of a sudden, wah, right, right in your face. <laughs> had to have some, I was like, had to have some fun with that though. But then again, it's kind of like, a, but then one other thing with the Stanley Kubrick films as well as you constantly watch them, they're constantly going to have that just weird feel to them. Where I, because you watch that one, you watch, of course, The Shining, uh, Doctor Strange Love. There's going to be a lot of just yeah. subtle nuance. Clockwork Orange is another one. A lot yeah. of nuances where it's just, if he had the technology that is available today, can you imagine the films that would have been made? Yeah, it, it's so funny. It is. It really is. It's like an unsettled feeling. Like I feel very uncomfortable, unsettled right now. And uh, yeah, that that's that's interesting. Um, I've never seen Doctor Strange Love. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Should I should I check it out? I I would say so. It's it's all it's a movie. I think it was made in 1964 or 68. I can't remember which year, but it was definitely has a real. It's really based on uh, the. It's based on the Cold War, and mm. I know I know the like. There's one part of it's a rather famous part where all of a sudden they're about to drop an atomic bomb on somebody, and they can't get it to like launch. So one of the guys just goes like tries to like get knock it off, and then as he knocks yeah. it off, he goes falling down. He's got the cowboy and he's going. Woo-hoo! And just like falling down on the bomb he's basically riding it to the ground jeez yeah that's that sounds uh pretty wild <laughs> oh i it, oh and i've seen a bunch of people like kind of uh do parodies of it especially the simpsons though like they did one with homer simpson just kind of like jumping on the bomb because i forgot who he was i think he was supposed to try and bomb some hippies or something and then yeah. just couldn't get the bomb to go so he's like jumping on it and of course it falls down and he just rides it all the way down <laughs> man i have to check that out so that one, and then um, I, I mean, I assume you've seen a Clockwork Orange because I know a lot of people have yeah. already seen that one. Yeah, it's been and a then, while, but uh, yeah, yeah. And then of course, uh, The Shining. I mean, oh yeah, Jack Nicholson. Like, because you already talked about Jack Nicholson as the Joker with kind of more because with his Joker it was more of like a he was more like a gangster style where you had Heath Ledger more of the anarchy style. And then I think it was uh, another way to put it was like with Joaquin Phoenix, kind of more of that normal person, really kind of going psychotic within his own mind, right. So we had a lot of different things going on there, but uh, again, yeah, with the shining with Jack Nicholson as well, seeing him kind of just go psychotic and lose his mind over the course that the unsettling feel in that movie is incredible. Yeah, for sure. And plus just the isolation of it, you know, uh, you know, obviously that's something we can all kind of relate with uh, at the, at the current uh, time, but uh, yeah, just, just the being trapped and snowed in like that and just isolated. That's uh, that's another element that's kind of, you know, unsettling and if you have anyone out there listening to this is living in the northern part of the united states at times you know what it feels like to be isolated and snowed in at the same time yeah 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 that's uh oh i don't know i couldn't do it i i don't i i mean obviously uh living somewhere where there's just snow all the time i wouldn't want to do that anyway because i'm just you know I, i love the i love the warm weather so much and uh i'm kind of kind of a wuss with the, the cold weather uh but um yeah you add that and then you add just the isolation that's rough and then you know all the the sunlight too i'm sure that's a factor just uh just dark all the time or daylight all the time i mean it, that would be kind of weird i mean i've never experienced anything with like the full-on like going to like alaska where they have the period of time where all of a sudden it's daylight or nighttime up to like 23 24 hours within a given day it's yeah it's got to mess with you a little bit. It does. I mean, it, you're not used to it. it. It definitely, it definitely does. And it's just kind of somewhere, you know, when like kind of think about it, your body wise, well, say you, w- say you wake up and it's dark, it's dark outside. It's kind of just like, oh, you're kind of tired. But one thing I remember was I was traveling to Colorado for, I mean, I was a junior in college for like a spring break trip and I had been driving all night. It was five o'clock in the morning and it was still dark out and I fell asleep and I woke up, it was 5.45 and I could see, and the sun was just kind of crossing over the horizon line. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, I feel awake right now. It was, <laughs> just, it was just the difference of going to bed when it was, or like falling asleep when it was dark and waking up on their sunlight. That's a huge difference right there. Wow. Yeah, I've never, I've never experienced that. Uh, but yeah, that would be interesting for sure. I'd say I'm so kind of surprised though, because I mean, I never, but then again, I never know what people do on tour anyway. Like after a show while you're driving all night, you guys are probably just passed out sleeping at that point. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, we'll probably stay up for a little bit. Um, 
you know, grab some, you know, grab some food, watch a little bit of TV. But uh, for the most part, I try to I try to go to sleep uh, somewhat at a decent hour just to preserve my voice, um, getting getting the rest. That's um, super important, at least for me. I feel like if I if I hadn't had enough sleep, it really kind of affects my voice the next day. So try to get ahead of that. And not only that, too, but just if you're not going to get like a good amount of sleep or a full amount of sleep at the same point, you're going to have this feeling of just kind of just tiredness throughout the whole entire day, feeling groggy, feeling a little bit like you're maybe sure. like a half a step behind on everything and just trying to have to force through that, especially on a performance, because I've gone through those sleep issues myself where I've I was at times where all of a sudden I was sleeping like three hours, a night, maybe two hours a night, a couple of times where all of a sudden I went to bed at like 1030 and it's six in the morning and my alarm's going off and I still hadn't fallen asleep yet. Oof. Yeah, that's brutal. <laughs> Trying yeah, to go through those days is bad. For, for, yeah, for sure. Right? And and just, you know, just a little foggy, you know, the next day. I mean, that's, that's you know, not ideal. So Yeah, and especially being out there and performing as well. And you want to always make sure that you're bringing everything 100% to the audience that you're going to see because you Absolutely. always want to make sure that they're getting the most out of the experience as well. You don't, and having a, like a go to bed at a consistent time as well, have that consistent sleep schedule, your body's going to naturally become accustomed to that to the point where all of a sudden, okay, it's this time you're on the bus. All of a sudden, okay, go to sleep, bing, bang, boom. Your body's going to fall asleep easier because it's so used to falling asleep at that time. It's like, you know, having a bedtime during the week. Yeah, totally. Uh, and for sure. I mean, it's, it's an honor, uh, you know, for me to have the opportunity to, to perform and, and, you know, be on a stage and, and be in front of people and, uh, you know, I, I take that very seriously, making sure that I'm I'm the best I can be and, and I give everything I've got while I'm up there. So and then as and if you do that too, what's gonna end up happening is is cause I've spoken about this plenty of times and I've actually well, I can actually bring up a more personal experience with that as well, because I have seen you play live before, especially with that uh tour that you were on with Bring Benjamin with Skill and Underworld back in twenty nineteen. Cause just, you know, you're bringing in your all the whole entire time. And you're just really trying to give 100%. And, of course, the audience is going to always remember certain things about that show. And I always remember a couple different things about that show. Like go, j- getting the uh, mosh pit for Under Oath and losing my shoe. Getting the mosh pit for Skillet. And the guy next to me getting hit in the chest with a flying Ooh. shoe. That was mine. Oh, man. <laughs> so I still got my shoe back. <laughs> and then when you guys went on, just, um, of course, uh, when you got when uh, Red Cold River came on to open up the show. I mean, everyone was just going nuts at that point because it was just everyone was waiting for it. And then did the whole entire, like, it was like a five or ten minute just, like, quick mix up of, like, a bunch of different songs as well. But, of course, uh, play the Imperial March at the same point as well and have them, like, been with all the lightsabers coming out the side as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's it's somewhere, of of course, like, I remember this stuff. I pick up on this stuff and I remember certain movements about what you guys did on stage that night, too. And if you weren't giving it your all, I wouldn't have those memories. I wouldn't be ingrained in my brain at this point, too. So, that's I mean, awesome. <laughs> it's, it speaks volumes what you're saying, just trying to make sure you're giving 100% as possible because you do. And I can attest to that. Ah, well, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's uh, I, honestly, I just I have it's it's fun. It's it's, um, you know, it's the greatest job in the world, uh, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, incredibly, incredibly uh, grateful to have it. So, you know, I, I try and have fun and enjoy myself. And uh, yeah, we take it seriously. And you know, people, people come out and spend their hard earned money to, to watch, uh, watch the show. So, you know, it's important. It's important to us. And, um, uh, you know, I, I feel, I feel weird if, if I, I don't know, I would feel weird if I didn't give it my hundred percent, I would be like, you know, what's the point, you know, um, you know, that's not, uh, that's not really fair, you know, for, for people. And so I, you know, I, I love it. I love it. I, I feel weird if, if, uh, you know, there's been days where I'm, where I'm, you know, if, if I'm a little under the weather, you know, I'm so disappointed that, you know, I'm, I'm not able to give my all, you know, so I don't know. I, I love it. I love it. I love the, uh, and the more people, the better it's, it's, it's weird. It's kind of like, you know, after you get through the initial shock of, uh, you know, so many people out there, um, you know, after a while, it just kind of looks like a blur <laughs> and, and, uh, and, you know, before long, the show's over and it's like, man, that was such a fun, just flash. Uh, but uh, yeah, I love it. So, well, just the fact that you love it as much as well. And again, give 100 percent all the time, making sure you're trying to give it your best. What's going to happen is, is that energy that you give off from that is going to end up reverberating out into the crowd. 
and that crowd is going to feed off that energy and that positivity and they're going to build up on it and then they're going to throw that energy right back at you. So then it kind of becomes like a mental energy feeding frenzy to the point where oh, yeah. the show just keeps getting better and better as it goes on just because you guys are into it. Then the crowd gets even more into it because the crowds get more into it. You guys get more into it. And it just keeps going back and forth. It's like playing Pong. Oh, yeah. I, we've, we've had a few shows where it was like that, where we were just uh, we played one time in Boston. It was just, it was uh, on an acoustic tour. And uh, man, I just they were they were just so wild and loud and and it was just amazing i mean after the first song i remember like looking over at, at, at ben and he looked at me and we were just like damn all right <laughs> i'm like all right this is you know i because i mean i think it was like the first show of the tour and uh you know after after long layovers you know i'm i always have a little bit of anxiety i'm like am i gonna remember all this the parts and you know you gotta knock off the rust a little bit but after that first song, I was just like, oh, man, this is this is going to be fun. So and I love that 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 kind of uh, that kind of exchange is 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 really addictive. Uh, you know, it's just such an amazing feeling and experience. And, uh, you know, so love love that when that's happening. I do remember that acoustic tour that you guys did as well, because that was back in 2017, correct? I believe so. Yeah. I think it was because I remember when you guys came through into Milwaukee, I actually went to go see the show because it was during a period of time when just everything in life for me was just falling apart. And it was probably during like the like the like one of the worst moments. And the only thing that had kept me going up to that point was going to see a couple of different shows just to try and just reinvigorate myself and just kind of try and get by. Of course, I went to go and see a band like uh, Rise Against because it's my favorite band. So I'm like, I got to go and see them. And it, it worked. <laughs> I'm like, okay, now Breaking Benjamin's coming to town. Yeah. All right, let's go give this a shot. And I didn't even know it was an acoustic set until I got there. But it was just the fact that it was an acoustic set just kind of, I couldn't get into like the full like, you know, positive energy of the show. But it was just some sort of weird like transcendent energy to just really put different things in life for me in a perspective just by listening to the songs I absolutely loved just in a completely different way through an acoustic setting. It was... It was something incredible. I don't know any other way to put it. It was, it was powerful, man. Oh, well, that's awesome, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for, thanks for coming out. Uh, you know, we're, we're obviously, uh, you know, happy that, uh, we're able to kind of, you know, uh, give people that kind of escape from the monotony or whatever, you know, you said you were kind of going through some stuff, you know, so that, that, that definitely makes us feel good that we were able to help in some way. And, you know, obviously the, the pandemic has made that impossible for people to kind of get that uh, specific kind of release and escape. So, you know, gosh, the sooner this stuff, you know, can come back, the better, because I'm sure there's there's so many people that are, uh, you know, really down and, and in the dumps about, uh, you know, this whole thing or whatever aspect of their life. And, uh, you know, I think people really need this kind of uh, release, you know, from live music and just music in general. So, it's tough. And, you know, there's obviously there's probably, uh, you know, lots of mental health uh, issues uh, that that have been caused by, uh, you know, us just, you know, this whole pandemic. So, you know, the sooner the better, the sooner it gets back uh, to being, uh, you know, bands able to get out there and play, the better. Um, it's been long. I mean, obviously, it's been cool to it's cool to have a, a break a little bit because we were touring there pretty, pretty heavy for, for the last five, six years. So it's been nice to have a little bit of a break. But after a while, I was like, all right, let's 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 get let's get back to uh, get back to it. Um, yeah, it's one thing to kind of take a break and it's a it's a, uh, you know, a purposeful thing. But to being to, to be forced to take a break and to be forced uh, to stay at home, it is no bueno. So. Yeah. Oh, oh God, no. And especially as like more of the concert goer side of myself as well. And the people I've talked to through just the stuff that I do, it makes a lot of sense with like, especially with people that have just kind of just are just really missing those concerts because it does have a little bit, it does have a negative effect on you mentality when you love going to concerts and you kind of have this like concert family vibe around there because everyone's sure. there to see these bands and you can like them for completely different reasons but you all have some sort of positive interaction and positive relationship with those bands. So everyone is just happy to see them happy to be there. And I mean, I like, I'll, I'll go here, like here in Milwaukee, I'll go to shows. I'll see a bunch of people. I know at every single show, I know their faces. I have no idea what their names are. I know their faces though. And we're always happy yeah. to see each other every single time. I haven't seen these people in over a year at this point, And I really miss them because 
I just kind of want to know that they're okay and see what they're doing. And then also, yeah. you know, hear someone just go and start playing something absolutely brutal. And then all of a sudden, all of us, instead of just shaking hands, are just bump, bumping each other and trying to basically <laughs> go absolutely ape crazy. Then by the time the song ends, by the time the set ends, everyone's giving each other high fives and hugs because it was like, we just went through this together. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. It, and that kind of thing, it really is, uh, is healing. You know, it's, it really is, uh, such a just, you know, positive release and, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it's rough. It's rough without it for yeah. sure. And especially with everything going on with the COVID shutdown for the past like year at this point, I would say has working out has been working on the uh, solo project with yourself and working on writing music. Been also a part of that, you know, healing process of missing live shows, missing performing as well. Just kind of going through and getting your emotions out there within just by writing songs and just doing what you love. For sure, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, and, and honestly it's all we got. It's all I got at the moment. You know, it's, it's, you know, we can't get out there and perform. I mean, you know, there's, there's plenty of uh, artists, musicians, you know, uh, setting up and performing live stream shows. And, and that's something that I've kind of been thinking about and, and, and talking to uh, uh, management about, but um, you know, so maybe that's, that's something we could do down the road, but it's gotta be the right thing. You know, there's, I don't want to just sit there with a, with an iPhone and just be like, you know, uh, even though there's nothing wrong with that, I have, I have done that in the past and it's, it's, it's fun, but, uh, it'd be cool to kind of set something up that was a little bit more professional, but yeah, it's, it's really, um, it, it's been, you know, trying to make the, the, the most out of it and, and take, uh, the positives away from, uh, this horrible situation. I mean, and it really is, it's, it's, it's horrible. It's tragic. You know, there's been so many, uh, loss of lives and, and, uh, so, but uh, in, in, in my world, it's really just I'm trying to, uh, you know, it's been a real uh, mental exercise to try and stay positive and stay busy and motivated. And uh, right now, writing songs and, and working in, in, in my studio is pretty much all I can do. So, yeah. But with my solo stuff, I, I really I, I kind of started that and started recording it before the pandemic began. So a lot of these songs. uh and, and, you know, various, you know, pieces of music or just, uh, you know, was kind of there and recorded before it hit. So uh, obviously, you know, during the pandemic that, you know, went through the mixing process and mastering and, uh, you know, got a, got a chance to really kind of re-listen to everything while it was happening. And it kind of gave me a little bit of a new perspective of the music and, uh, you know, some of the lyrics and stuff. And, and a lot of it made sense for uh, for the pandemic itself. It really kind of sounds like uh, it was an, an, an inspired thing from the pandemic. But no, it was uh, it was beforehand, but it just happens to work. <laughs> so uh, but, you know, it's kind of general ideas and thoughts that that, um, you know, just human beings go through. It's it's, you know, songs about just, um, you know, life, living in general. Um even sometimes like just various movies and things that, that I watch all the things that uh, I come in contact with can be inspiring. But, um, but anyway, yeah. And then Sorry, makes a... I, I kind of went on a tangent there about the <laughs> stuff. Oh, don't worry, Keith. I love it when you guys, when whoever I have on the podcast goes on tangents, heck then sometimes I go on tangents too, and just kind of just go <laughs> off for like two, three minutes. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Now I got to slow down because I don't think everyone's here just to hear me talk, <laughs> but it makes a lot of sense what you're talking about as well. Again, when COVID hit, just taking advantage of the opportunity that was brought forward with this, even though it is a horrible situation with the fact that there's a lot of live laws, live venues are being shut down because they're not able to make any kind of money. Um, just the fact that we're all kind of st stuck within our own little spaces right now, can't really go out right. and interact as much as we would like to. It's, yeah, it's just, a, it's a horrible situation we've been dealt, but instead of focusing on, oh, we could have, could have been doing this, had the situation been different. It's nah, this is the situation we're in right now. What can we do to make the most of it for ourselves? And really focusing in on, you know, mixing, mastering, listening to all the stuff that you had recorded before, for this, and then also having a different perspective on it. Maybe just figuring out, you know, maybe I'm working on this song and all of a sudden, okay, the lyrics, they make sense. But now with a different perspective, maybe making a little tweak here, not only keeps sure. the perspective that we had, but also allows an open interpretation to this new perspective that we've had because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, music is, is subjective. Uh, you know, it, it, I like the fact that, 
even if I have a certain meaning about something in my head, you know, uh, you know, whatever, whatever the listener wants to take away from it. I'm, I'm, you know, thrilled about that. So. Oh, that gets brought up constantly on this podcast, or especially when I go deep into it, like in any song, when I try and analyze it in my way, first thing I always try and figure out is the meaning because at times I'm never going to have the exact same meaning as, as the artist has themselves, sure. but that's all because of what you went through versus what I've gone through in life it can be two completely different things. However, oh, yeah. what always seems to be a constant is what the basic idea and the core idea behind the song is, is there. But when you get down to the specifics, of course, as people and as listeners, we're going to relate it to our own lives. We're going to relate it to our own selves and our own experiences. But that's the beauty of music because when we're listening to what you're saying and what you're talking about, what you're expressing through that music, we're able to give certain ideas and certain perspectives and certain emotions that we've had through life. We're able to give them a tangible thing that we can latch on to in terms of, okay, what was this like? What did this feel like? What did this sound like? Well, listen to this song and this is exactly what it has. Like right. that's pretty much... Well, for me, at least when it comes to just figuring out music, it's like, how does that work out where, again, it's going to it, almost every single time, like I can kind of pick and choose what the artist is trying to say at the base, make it more personal towards myself. And then the song just gets better and better because then listening to the story that the song is telling the way that the instrumentals are progressing, man, it just tells that story perfectly almost every single time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we all have different perspectives, you know, like you were saying, um, but uh, I, you know, I feel like for the most part, my songs are 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 pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you know, there's nothing too, um, you know, out there and abstract. Uh, you know, a little bit. You know, I, I take a few little artistic liberties and, uh, you know, try to try to paint to uh, paint a wide picture. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I think for the most part, I mean, especially with my my current single, Dream Away, really. It's just not giving up on uh, the possible future positive horizons and, and not giving up on hope on, on that, you know, things, things can kind of get better. And, and look, if things are kind of not the greatest at the moment to, to at least just take a minute to, uh, you know, try to alleviate that discomfort, even if you, you know, look, look for things to kind of take you away from that kind of uh negative mind space so so um yeah see because I, I love that you brought that up is because when i was going through it if you constantly see my head turn to the side it's because when i go deep dive into the song i always write everything down i have it on a different yeah. screen so i just want to make sure i don't mess it up like i want to make sure if i if i thought it i write it down so i don't right. miss it and when I was going through it, like trying to figure out the meaning at first, I thought I was talking about how in this world we can end up getting very rather monotonous and how we can just kind of become stuck within like more of a mundane style and just kind of just, you know, pit like kind of like pitter patters along through life unless we really try and break free and keep our dreams alive. So again, it's kind of the yeah. specifics around it are different. However, the base idea, it seems like, is focusing on the positives and trying to make those positives become reality instead of focusing on the negatives. So it's kind of the same core concept in a way, but just those specifics are different based on probably just be through, through different things that we've gone through in life separately. Sure. Absolutely. And I, I've, I've always kind of believed if, if, if you can, if you can dream up something um, and, and, you know, it, it's, it's a reality in your, in your mind, you know, it, I don't know, it can, it can kind of point you in the, in the, mind frame in the right direction to try to make it uh, a reality that's not just that's not just in your mind uh, I don't know if that's the right way to explain that but uh, you know the, I guess the first thing to to something like that is to kind of envision it happening and uh, so that's kind of the I guess the start uh, but yeah it's uh it's definitely been a tough year and and I've I've you know, listen to the song a bunch, you know, going through the whole mixing prog, you know, process. And, uh, yeah, I, I hope that, uh, there's a positive or people take away a positive message because it is, um, you know, from, from my point of view, I, I really wanted that. I tried to, uh, kind of send that positive message that, you know, not to give up on hope and, and, um, you know, things can, uh, things can get better. So, and, and I think, I think, of course, especially with me trying to figure out the meaning as well, I think you hit the nail on the head with that because give me a little bit more of a personal context to it as well, where I was coming from that mundane and like, it's like trying to 
not stay within that mundane sound, try and break free and kind of maintain your dreams and what you want. One of the reasons why I went through that period of just, uh, just, just not good times, horrible depression as well was because I was feeling like after I got out of college, I was falling into this very mundane lifestyle and it was something that I didn't want, but I didn't know exactly how to get out of it or what to do in order to basically make it better. So I was trying to constantly figure out, you know, what do I actually want to do? What actually makes me happy go through that. And now three and a half years later, here I am. So, and sure. it's, and if it was, if it wasn't for, if honestly, if it wasn't for music, it wasn't for trying to help me get like using it to help me get through everything I had done, I wouldn't have gained so much an appreciation for it than I already had. I wouldn't have decided, okay, let's see what I can do with this to kind of make something for myself with this and really get more connected with it. And all of a sudden, boom, I start a project, a MSLTD rocks project. All of a sudden start the corporate regression podcast. I was just doing it by myself. And when, even when I started by myself, I'm like, you know, it'd be kind of cool to start interviewing bands and all of a sudden. About a ye- about two years later, boom! Here I am with a member of one of my favorite bands. So <laughs> it's kind of just like a full surreal moment. But again, it's just not really focus. It's focusing on the positives of what can happen in life and what you can make happen instead of focusing on okay, I'm stuck here, and that's it. Absolutely, uh, you know, it's it's kind of one of those things where it's like it could be it could be a short term just escape, watch a movie, get out of that negative space. Or long term, where it's like, I want to make a fundamental change in my life. And I, I see where I want to be. Uh, and I just got to get up and, and put the work in to do it and make it happen. So, Oh, absolutely. When it comes to the meeting that you intend as well, and kind of having that pot, that focus on that positivity and me going through more of the specifics on it. Again, here's the perfect example. I think you hit the nail on the head with this meeting. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. Uh, it's funny. I had, uh, I had an interviewer, um, you know, we kind of touched on these points a little bit and, and he said, you know, he was like, but the songs, the song is still dark. It's very, it's very, it's kind of dark. And I was like, yeah, it, it is in a way, you know, obviously the, the, you know, the chords are, you know, there's some minor chords and stuff and just kind of atmospheric, uh, you know, kind of looming sounds, but you know, that's just, Hey, I love, I love dark music. I love, uh, I love that kind of stuff, you know? So but I always kind of try to uh, sprinkle in the positive positivity uh, as well. Yeah, but you listen to a lot of music that has this more dark tone to it as well. There's a lot of times where it has a lot of different positive meanings to it. And it's sure. something that you wouldn't necessarily expect. I think a good example of a band that has more of those darker tones on it, but really does sometimes really focus on more of a positive a message in their songs would be a band like motionless and white. I think they do it tremendously, especially when they did it on graveyard shift as well. A song like voices and eternally yours. Like it does have this dark feel to it, but you listen to the song, you look at the lyrics and they're incredibly positive in what they're trying to talk about. Yeah. I think that's great. And, and, you know, cause there's, there's enough negativity in the world. Uh, you know, so it's like, it's, it's great when, when artists can just use their platform to try to make the world a better place. And uh, yeah. Oh, easily. And then, of course, like I brought up earlier, too, when you're talking about kind of having more of that like sci fi, like uh, liking within yourself, especially <laughs> with like the intro, because I had this like what I classify as like a cyber sonic feel like on a synth that kind of bleeds into the first verse with some percussion and like softer percussion, in the backing. And then as you get in the second half of the verse, like the drumming does pick up more by playing this more consistent beats of the like light hi hat hits in between while this cyber synth is kind of really coming back in again. And I really like this move and how it works and relates with the theme of the song because and overall that cybersonic synth, it felt like it was more reflective on ourselves while also making it like we are in some distorted reality at the same point as well. And then increased drumming at the verse at the second half of the verse just really builds and allows for the clean transition of what I hope was just like this chorus that was just going to really maximize on the full overall theme just really kind of coming in a lot harder but also louder but also really fit in the same time as well. But mm-hmm. like that cybersonic synth feel it just really made it work well as kind of like a reflection on maybe, okay, you know, we're kind of focusing on like, okay, you know, here's the future. Here's the positivity. Here's the dreams that we have. And it's like the times they seem far away, but really they're, they, they're not. If we really work at it, we really focus in on it. There's a lot of things that we can make happen positively in our own lives. And if kind of just take that negativity and kind of push it to the side and not really focus on it. For sure, man. You got you took a lot away from that, man. Uh, that that's awesome, man. <laughs> oh, I do this all the time. It's like if, when I'm listening to music, it's there's so many different subtle nuances that are in there that it's really interesting to really go deep dive into them. Just because 
I found stuff from even some of my favorite songs that I never even knew was there until I did do something like this. And it's just really interesting to kind of pick it like in a way, like pick a pick them apart, but really understand the differences and why the instrumentals are sounding the way they do and yeah. how they maximize on the message that the vocals and that the lyrics are trying to portray. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I feel like a lot of people probably most of the time, um, you know, they they're kind of concentrating on how the what what the lyrics are saying, what you know, as, as opposed to what does what kind of feeling does the music you know make them feel um that's 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 really interesting lots of times when um when i'm you know writing songs uh you know there, there'll be just a piece of music and just going off of what the what the chords are doing and how it's being played what's being played you know what what kind of feeling does that give me what what kind of what what am i picturing in my head what does that make me you know think of you know um so it's interesting that that you kind of heard uh, kind of kind of some of some of that stuff from just the music, you know, alone without any, um, you know, lyrics and everything coming in yet. So that's cool. But I definitely know what you're saying. It's 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 definitely uh, I don't know. It's, it, whenever I'm writing and I'm in that that you know, you know, part of the process, it could go anywhere. It's like what what am I gonna write about here? You know what what. Uh, you know every uh, and it's tough because a lot of things for the most part pretty much for the most part has been said and done in songs and music uh so it's hard to kind of come up with something original right about or or even still just an original way of saying the same thing that's just been said so many times before so um you know you, it's kind of nice to kind of rely on what where does the music uh you know where does it take you mentally what kind of uh you know, images do you see in your head from that piece of music? So it's definitely uh, difficult. I think that's a really good way to put it, though, just because, again, there's a, a music been around for an ungodly amount of years. And especially with music that's been accessible to a lot of people that always has a lot of words attached to it has been accessible for about at least the past hundred years at this point with many different styles, many different genres, saying a lot of the same and bringing forward, forward a lot of the same messages, but trying to come oh, yeah. up again in interesting different ways. And you can only say them in so many different ways, but when you create music and you create the music that you want, you just kind of let it create itself and just let yourself create without really forcing it in a different way. What's going to happen is you're going to create something and you're going to be attached to the emotion that is created by it. And then you can come up with the lyrics on your own and really let the music dictate the story that you're trying to tell within those lyrics just by letting it flow, honestly. Sure. I mean, uh, there's, there's, you know, uh, I, I, I try my best with it. You know, I uh, I've been writing songs for a while, um, you know, and I feel like I'm still, you know, there's still plenty of things for me to learn as a writer. So uh, but there's there's, you know, some amazing songwriters out there that that are uh, just absolute masters and, and geniuses, in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just kind of going to continue to work on my craft and and um, and try to use that that kind of you know, my imagination the best I can and, and, and try to come up with new and original ways to kind of say stuff. And plus, you know, look, it, it, there's so many things that's been done before. It's like, I, I get that it's, it's not reinventing the wheel, the wheel in a lot of, a lot of cases, but uh, you know, there's, there's plenty of bands that I love that, uh, you know, that, um, you know, that I'm inspired by and it's, it's fun to kind of, uh, chase that kind of sound inspiration with my writing so uh speaking of so you you said before we kind of started this thing that you heard various influences in the in the song and in the music i'm curious i'm curious what you heard because you know obviously i know what i've i've listened to growing up and throughout my my life i'm, I'm interested to hear what what you got well i'm gonna go through this because when i go through the core if i go through the chorus and go through the instrumentals of how i thought of it this is yeah. where it's really, this is where, especially when I picked up on certain influences that I think that you had in here, this is where it's going to really come out. So I kind of want to explain it first. So people are listening, kind of understand where I'm coming from, but then really go deeper into the influence right. as well, because we got to the choruses. It did have this more melodic hard rock feel with some of the harder guitars playing more melodic sign. Drums play with a lot more vigor, more dynamic style to really get the point across of the song here. But then again, that like cybersonic synth was kept in there, but it was a much softer in terms of volume. And I was a really big fan of how this was done as well, because you, again, you get more of this hard rock feel. We're finally realizing that maintaining this dream is something that we need to do in order not to fall victim of them and not need the sameness in life. But mm -hmm. then having that subtle, like cybersonic synth in there, 
makes it more of a tattoo, like that dream state as well. It's like, you know, this is possible as long as you can make it happen. And this is where, like, when I got to the chorus, it reminded me a lot of, like, a heavy mix of two bands with a slight mix of another one. The slight mix of one that I got in there was, of course, Breaking Benjamin. But the two that really stood out to me were uh, two bands, Chevelle and Ten Years. The hmm. sty- It was just the style it was done in. It reminded me so much of listening to some of those songs that just hit with a more melodic style, more of a hard rock style as well. And I really liked how this was done. Because it has this perfect feel when it comes to breaking free from the bounds of monotony with that sound. It's heavy, yeah. it's hard, but it isn't overly, it isn't brutal. And it just sort of sinks you right in like if you're listening to a 10-year song and really lets you sink into it. Like that's where I really picked up on those influences. But pretty much heavily Chevelle in 10 years. Those were the two that really stuck out to me. Wow, that's funny. Yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I've known the 10 years guys for a long time. We're actually uh, from the same place. Um, yeah, we, I kind of really I started my music career in Knoxville, Tennessee, and that's where they're from. That's where I met them. We used to play shows all the time in uh, in the local scene. Um, that's, so that's funny you say that. Um, and uh, obviously, I've been a big fan of theirs for years, but yeah, definitely not something I, I set up, to, uh, set, you know, uh, set out to try and do. Uh, yeah, that's that's funny. Maybe subconsciously, but uh, yeah, I would. Uh, that's funny. Yeah. Well, that, well, then I, now I got to ask you um, what, like what bands were you listening to? What music was influencing you when you were writing this song to see what you were actually really had the headspace in when it came to this, or was it just something that you just wrote out naturally and just kind of let it happen? Yeah. I, I honestly, I don't like to have um, a lot of things so much uh, in my head, I guess. I, I guess I'd like to just see what the subconscious says. Um at least that's that's more enjoyable uh that way to me um because i don't know i i guess it's it, it i feel like maybe i would uh tend to kind of make decisions that aren't so uh influenced i guess i don't know um i don't want it to influence me prior you know um so even like when i'm just writing for other stuff, you know, and, and someone's just like, you know, really we're, uh, you know, we're a, ba- we're a fan of these certain bands or whatever. And I think in that case, yeah, uh, it's kind of good to do a little bit of homework and research and stuff, but still not, not, not let that influence me too much. Cause you want to kind of come up with something that's, uh, you know, different and original and obviously not ripping anybody off in any way, yeah. but, but, uh, I was going to say, but when it comes down to it as well, I like what you said on that. It's like you kind of just clear your head and just kind of just go into it with a clear mind and whatever the heck's going to come out and however you feel like it's come out is going to come out as well. But I mean, sure. it's, it's just kind of funny that especially the fact that you get, you've known the 10 years guys for so long. And that was one of the big one of the big sounds that I picked up on. This was like was kind of the sound that they've created over the course of their years, and especially if you've known them for so long, maybe in their subconscious when it came to working on this song and just trying to maximize the feeling in the chorus, maybe some of those little bits that they have worked on some of those little bits of influence that they've had just that have been stuck in your subconscious, maybe came out at this point to really maximize the impact that this chorus had. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe so. Hopefully, hopefully they didn't hear the song and they're just like, what the hell Keith? <laughs> like, I, I, I truly hope that, uh, that's, uh, not the case because it definitely was not my intention. Um, yeah, I've always, I've always tried to, uh, uh, you know, kind of make my way on my own merit. Uh, even even people that say that, you know, there's any kind of Breaking Benjamin sound or comparisons with it, you know, I, I definitely is is that's pretty much the opposite of what I would want to do, uh, because I don't I don't want to have that kind of, uh, you know, that kind of comparison with the music, obviously. Uh, those guys are, uh, are, are, are my great friends and, uh, we've, we've made some great memories and, and, uh, and many memories, uh, yet to make, but, uh, you know, as far as the music goes, you know, I want to, I want to make it on my own merit and, and, uh, and not kind of have that, uh, that thing there, you know, where it's just like, oh, he's, he's just trying to sound like them, which is not the case. I, I'm, if anything, I'm trying not to sound like them. Uh, and, and, and I don't think anyone can really ever sound like, uh, Ben and, you know, he's, he's just a a, a great, uh, you know, songwriter, great singer. And, uh, so I, I try to just do, 
uh, what I can do the best I can. Um, and, and, you know, my own little world, my own little, uh, uh, you know, what talent I have. So, and when it comes down to it, I don't think these guys are going to look at this and be, be like, oh, this sounds like this be like, whoa, like kind of just really understanding the feeling that it was trying to come across in this song sure. and the message was trying to come across. But it's just, again, when it kind of picking apart those pieces, it's not just like, oh, you know, you try to just do what they did. No, it's because you probably listened to some of these bands for for a good amount of time. It's you understand how they bring forward the message and how they work to bring forward that message. So and so it's kind of like you have that in your mindset as well subconsciously. So when you're trying to put it out there, if you're trying to put out a certain emotion, it's kind of like, okay, how can I say this? And then when it comes out, it's sure. like, okay, you know, it, it's kind of like that old uh, adage. It's like you're you're most like like the five people you spend the most amount of time with. Kind of that like so kind of like uh, what's the word? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to, I can't remember who even came up with it. It's like, you're most like the five people that you hang out with the most. I can't remember whoever came up with that quote, but it kind of has that thing where it's like, you have all these different influences coming in. You understand so many different things and how these songs are created and how these songs make you feel. So when you're trying to write something to make you feel like trying to put out your feelings in these songs as well, it's yeah, some of these different pieces are going to come out in there. But when you blend everything together through your own personal life, it is going to come out as purely yourself. Sure. It's not going to come out as, oh, it's going to be just like this, just like this. No, it's going to be what you want it to be because you're putting your whole, you're putting your life, you're putting your perspective, you're putting what you really love into this. So again, could it have yeah. a little bit of a subtlety of towards those bands? Just like uh, as a, I'm not saying a copy, I'm saying as a, hey, if you like the sound of these and you like the message and the way that the instrumentals speak to that message, you're going to feel that exact same kind of feeling when you listen to Keith. Sure. Well, it's like we're, we're, you know, we're all rock musicians. We're all rock bands. We're, we all live in the same era. We're all about the same age. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's rock music, you know, it's modern rock music. And, uh, you know, so there's, there's, there's guitars, bass and drums and a singer, you know, so obviously there's going to be some comparisons there, but, uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, I, I find it interesting. Uh, I mean, plus, I mean, my voice, I feel like my voice is, is, you know, uh, for, for better or for worse, I, I sound like I do. <laughs> so I don't know. It's not going to sound like anybody else. No. And it's, I'll put it this way, especially in the verses, it, it sounded definitely just like something I hadn't heard of ever before. Cause I also do look at the vocals as well in a completely separate sure. section. So don't worry about that. But when it came to the verses, you had this cleaner style, but also this kind of soft feel to it overall, which, I, and again, there's times where I've seen the mix on this go a little bit awry. However, the mix on this was fantastic because it was clearly audible, but the softer feel to your vocals here does a great job in creating that feeling of living a world controlled by someone that for me, what, how I took it controlled by someone that isn't yourself and your vocals, you let that like sonic cyber synth sound really stand out. Wealth going throughout the song. Like this is a huge plus in my mind because it just really let the story be told in a completely different way at the exact same time as well, just through the vocals that if you just isolated those, but putting it all together, it's, you had this feeling of, you know, living in a world of focusing on something that, you know, maybe living in a world that you weren't fully controlling or focusing on the negatives while this synth is kind of building up towards looking towards the positives at the exact same time as well. It's a really interesting kind of contrasting feel, but it works at the same time when you put them together, it feels like it's building. But if it's like, if I focus on the vocals, it's like, again, you're, it's like telling a completely different story. So there's <laughs> a lot of layers to this song that I had really no idea if there was going to be until I dove deep into it. Well, I appreciate it, man. Uh, I love, I love all the things you've kind of, uh, taken away from it. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I tried, I tried my best. I tried my little darndest on it. So, uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> happy that it's, it's finally out there. Uh, even though I was super, super nervous, I always get super nervous before, um, some of my stuff that is released before it comes out. I just, I'm always just, you know, scared that no one's going to like it or, or care or even notice or anything, you know? So, uh, but you know, the, the response has been, unbelievable from people it's it's absolutely just uh it's 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 made my entire year uh, you know just the response that i've got from the song has has really just uh yeah it's just inspiring and um so i'm super grateful for the people for uh taking the time out of their day to even check out the song so it's been awesome well i'm gonna i'm gonna try and make sure as many people check out this song as i possibly can just because <laughs> 
again, when it really comes down to understanding how to tell that story, you do it incredibly well. And I got to go to the chorus vocals as well, because you do have a point in time where all of a sudden it does get a little loud, a little bit more vocal. And then it kind of goes back to that softer vocal sound just in two separate parts at the exact same time as well. And this is kind of also where a little bit of that comparison that I made to like if people like bands like 10 Years and Chevelle, why they can really get into this song is because when you give them that more powerful vocal, it's something that I felt like the same. I hear I hear it and I feel the same way I do when someone like Jesse from 10 Years does something like that when he has a more powerful vocal style or like Pete from Chevelle. Mm -hmm. like it kind of really just really came out there and it just has the exact same feel to it when it comes to really hitting you with the emotion and it really let your vocal range go full and you let the power behind it with the more black guitars really stand out to really bring over that greatness. However, when you broke it up and brought that softer vocal back in, the, like you did in the verses, following the more powerful vocal, I really like the move here as well because we're getting the realization moment, which is what I kind of came in the song with the emotion was that realization moment that we should be dreaming for ourselves and really going after that and really trying to focus on the positives. But the this really lets it really sink into your consciousness at the exact same time as well as sinking into your subconsciousness so it's like you're hitting people with it, but then it's slowly sinking into them with that message just through the music, just through that chorus, just by doing that heavy, like that more vocal, more powerful style and then bringing it back to more of a softer, subtle style and just kind of hitting them with it again and bringing it back within the chorus. That's cool. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like uh, if, if people can, uh, people happen to, uh, to get all that from uh, from the song, I'm, I'm thrilled. So, yeah, man, that's awesome. Say when it comes down to it, everybody, the song is like an ogre. It has layers like Shrek. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. I, I, I couldn't help. It. I had to put a Shrek reference in there somewhere. I'm like, there's got to be a place for this. I'm like, OK, here it is. There's a lot of layers to this song. We're going with Shrek on it. <laughs> <laughs> now, at this point, I also wish I had an onion right here so I could just like try and peel. It's like it's got layers, but I don't have an onion <laughs> with me. Cue the cue the, the 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 rim shot sound effect. Oh man, I wish I still I wish I, I wish I still had the drum kit I had when I was ten years old. I just have the snare right here and the little uh, crash and ball. Ding. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do the uh, good old uh, rim shot to my to myself on this one. <laughs> but when it comes to it, like whenever I go through a deep like go through a song deeply, I yeah. really also like to like an overall kind of compare like basically compilation of it so that when I'm ever I'm doing an album review or something I can kind of come back to it. it's kind of like okay here's a little quick synopsis of what I felt like but I also like to add it in here as well so sure overall I thought this outing from Keith was absolutely great you can tell that there has a feeling of that same like Chevelle and 10 years emotion that is in there and how it's presented to create more of that melodic hard rock sound to maximize on the realization aspect of the overall song However, where the real standout comes in is that use of that cybersonic synth and how it gives us the feel that we are living a world too mundane for what we wanted. And then we should be going forward and focusing on the positive, focusing on what we want to do, focusing on our dreams in life instead of focusing on the negatives and potentially going into this, you know, mundane style where we're just kind of existing. Then the chorus hits us with the realization again, hard, but it's again, lets it sink into you given the use of your vocal range going powerful and then more subtle at the exact same time as well. Overall, it's a good song for you all to check out if you seriously haven't yet, because yeah, if you haven't yet, that is going to be a major problem here because uh, this is a damn good song that you need to listen to. Again, it's like an ogre. It's got layers. I appreciate it, man. I, and I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you having me on and, and for all the support and uh, yeah, I hope, uh, I hope everybody that hasn't heard it, I hope they dig it. Well, I'm going to make sure of it as well because we, uh, because the whole entire podcast started on this thing that we have, I created online called MSOTD rocks. It was basically like a rock appreciate rock and metal appreciation page. So one thing I always do is I always post a different song of the day feature so that people can get into different music, whether it's a band that they absolutely love bands that they well known or bands I've had in the podcast they might not have known just kind of expand people's horizons I will have this as a song of the day feature at some point right around the time the podcast comes up because well I don't want people to forget about this one I mean people got to listen to it people got to enjoy it because they're really going to be able to feel the passion behind it. they're going to be able to feel the amount of layers of this message that's going to be in there just through the uh the mix on here and just through how that chorus hits powerfully and then kind of pulls back a little bit so it hits you in the face but then it kind of like lets the message sink right into you so i'm gonna make sure people listen to this one that's what i gotta <laughs> say about you, that <laughs> thank you man i appreciate that 
So when it comes to now with with of course Dreamaway, of course that we just went through the whole entire thing. But when it comes to other stuff that you've got coming out in 2021 as well, what else can we expect? Yeah, uh, just pretty much. There's there's more where that came from. Um, it's the this is the first song of a of my of my first full length solo album. Um, so I'm excited I'm excited to get uh, get these songs out. Like I said, I, I've I've had them had them on my computer for a while. So uh, yeah, definitely stoked. Um, and right now I'm, I'm kind of shooting for a, a spring, late spring release of the album, but there should be another song, um, uh, coming out before that. Um, even though I guess it's getting, it's edging closer and closer to spring <laughs> while we speak. So, uh, we'll see everything's all fluid, you know, kind of waiting to see how, um, you know, dream away, how long it kind of stays out there. And, um, so just kind of waiting to see, but there's definitely going to be more music released. Oh, don't worry. I usually put on like the bottom of the podcast. He has always put like either the song or like an album or like an EP that's coming off is put on there. There's plenty more of that came from. <laughs> awesome, man. Just to get more people hyped up into it and be like, Oh man, we got, we can't wait for this. We got to listen to this now. We all of a sudden that, you know, it's going to end up being announced the release date. People are going to end up going like, okay, you got to go pre-save this guys. Cause you don't want to miss out on this. Trust me. I mean, if we went through Dreamway and it was this fantastic, do you really want to miss out on more? I mean, you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't pre-save this thing or you didn't pre-order it. Come on. I'm when it when it gets released or when it gets announced, again, you're gonna to want to do that. Just make sure of it. So yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So Keith, as we bring this to a close, one thing I always like to do is I always like to, before I go through my whole entire ending spiel, I always like to give you basically the floor to say whatever you want, whatever you want to plug, whatever you want to say. So Keith, to end this out, the floor is yours. Uh, All right. Uh, I guess I would say, um, yeah, come come visit me on all my my social media platforms. Uh, It's at KJ Wallen. Uh, Facebook is just my name, Keith Wallen. Um, yeah, if you haven't checked out my latest single dream away, please, please check it out. And, uh, and if you like it, tell your friends, get it out there and, uh, and just, you know, stream away, uh, dream away, stream away. So yeah, that's pretty much it, man. And thank you. Uh, obviously, uh, it begins and ends with, uh, all the fans and, and, and all the listeners and, and everybody that, uh, you know, supports me and my music and, and, and my, my, a band breaking Benjamin, obviously it's, uh, it's so, uh, amazing to be able to, uh, have a career and, uh, you know, obviously it's crazy right now with everything going on, but, um, yeah, we, we appreciate you guys, uh, for everything through it all. So, well, now it is my turn to close out. I always end up with a couple of things. So first thing is this, Keith just said where you can find him on social media, where you can and uh, listen to Dreamway. And of course, you're going to want to find out and make keep tabs on it because when this album is released and when it's announced, you're going to want to know about it. So when it comes to finding Keith on social media, when it comes to finding him on YouTube, website, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever it is, you guys are going to want to have this like one-stop shop, one-stop convenient place just to, oh, where can I just have like the links for this stuff and just click on it, make it as easy as possible. I got you covered. So look at the description of the podcast, YouTube, Spotify, Podcast, Google Play, iHeartRadio. There'll be a thing that says, find Keith Wallen online, and you're just going to have a list of links. I'll have them labeled as well so that you can just click on them. Bing, bang, boom. Make it as easy as possible for you to find them online, watch the YouTube video, and just stream his music on any streaming service or provider that you use. So I'm making it as easy as possible, and you guys, come on. <laughs> yeah. Also, I have, a, I have a similar link on my uh, Instagram in my bio of my Instagram is a, uh, one of those smart links. So it goes, you know, everything, Spotify, Apple music, YouTube. Um, yeah. Awesome. So I need, now I know that. So if I am trying to, if I miss anything, I can always go there and be like, okay, what did I miss out on? Okay, there it is. <laughs> and a couple other things. One, again, when the, uh, when this album comes out from Keith, I want you guys to do something for me. I want you to listen to it. I want you to end up DMing us at I'm so TD Rocks and just let us know what you guys think of it. Yes, I'm putting the word out to you guys, so I want to make sure you guys listen to this. Also, um, when concerts do return, because, I mean, I want them to return. We all want them to return. Let's put it that way. We want live shows to return, hopefully sooner rather than later. Hopefully at this point, got to cross my fingers on that one. So Keith, whether it's you're touring with 
your solo project or your tour with Breaking Benjamin. I mean, you guys come through Milwaukee, you guys come through Chicago because I'm only nine, I'm only an hour and a half away. There's going to be almost 100% chance that I end up coming to see you live because, well, I love the song. I want to see you play live with the Soul Project. And if you're tour with Breaking Benjamin, of course I'm going to be there. Why wouldn't I be there? But I was, if I enjoy having guests in the podcast, which I always do, I always enjoy doing this stuff, I always like to make the bands or whoever's on here a promise. And I know you said that you're a big pizza guy. So, Keith, pizza's on me. All right. You got me there, man. And Hell if, yeah. <laughs> I'll say, and if and if for some reason I forget, um, just bring it up to me and I will make sure I will go and find you the best pizza possible, whether it's in Milwaukee or Chicago. Chicago, I just got to go find a great place that has deep dish pizza. It'll be like, here you go, sir. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you're, that, that, you're two kinds. Very nice of you. So, Keith, with all that being said, this was absolutely fantastic. This was kind of like one of those like weird dream come true kind of things to end up being able to talk to someone about the music, but also someone from a band that's one of my favorite bands of all time. So thank you for being on the podcast. This was awesome. And in all good conscience, I cannot end this podcast episode with a goodbye due to the fact that, well, I do have plans to see you play live, not only with Soul Project, both Breaking Benjamin as well. And I just made you a promise. Pizza's on me. So I can't end this with a goodbye. I got to end this by saying, you know, my favorite thing. See you later. Thank you so much. Well, well, folks, that was my interview with Keith Wallen about his solo project. Also, he is the rhythm charts for Bacon Benjamin for you guys who need a reminder. Now, his song, Dream Away, is out now. His full-length album for his solo project will be coming out sometime in 2021. He said later in spring. But again, when you need to find it, his socials, where you can find the song on YouTube, where you can find everything for him on Spotify Music, where you can stream it, everything. I'm having the links in the description of the podcast for you. So YouTube, Spotify, Podcast, Google Play, iHeartRadio. Jen, look at the description. Everything is going to be there. And we're not going to let you forget about this one because Dream Away is a fantastic song. I want you guys to listen to it. So we're going to make sure that that happens with the Song of the Day feature right around the time this podcast comes out as well. So if you forget to listen to it, like you should, like right now. So once we close this out, go listen to Dream Away and enjoy and also, once again, thank you, Mr. Brian from uh, MDK Music Group and Maverick Apparel for sending me this nice shirt after all the work that we've done with MDK Music Group bands. Again, I want to give a huge thank you to you as well. And on that note, that's going to be for me today, guys. Thank you for watching and listening to the Chord Progression Podcast. But City rocks or rock and metal thrive. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I end every single one. So this is the big, healthy, and hearty. See y'all. Yeah.